Hello everyone, thank you for listening to His Dork Materials. I just wanted to take a moment to talk to you today about Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard about Anchor.fm, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Not only is it free, but the creation tools are included that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. What's up, everybody? Thank you for listening to His Dork Materials. My name is Josh. Ah, my name is the Commodore. And I'm the best bro, Heather. Really rethinking some decisions here. <laughs> Specifically marriage-related ones, <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Maybe. Just, mm. we'll, see how the rest of the, <laughs> we'll see how the rest of this episode goes. I don't know what your problem is. Because uh, we watched Brave today, too, huh? Oh no! Oh no! Um, so <laughs> today we're here to talk about a little show called Picard. Hopefully, I called this show with his dork materials at the beginning. You did good. Um, I've had <laughs> I had a, a powerful powerful beverage before we watched this episode. <laughs> I could see my breath, and my microphone doesn't want to cooperate. So this should be a fun episode. Um. Certainly more fun than parts of the episode we watched today. Uh, that, that'll be a big oof. Uh, Star Trek Picard <laughs> is <laughs> a what's the what's the phrase? It's a study in contrast or whatever the I can't think of what the actual phrase is. Something along those lines. Uh, at any rate, uh, you're here to listen to us talk about Picard, uh, ostensibly or. You've just forgot to unsubscribe to the <laughs> podcast <laughs> and your your data limit's being eaten up by this show. If you're still be listening to this show, then you're on the side of the angels. Lord almighty. <laughs> um, so episode eight, this show episode should have been called, we finally tell you what this show's about. So essentially that's what happens in this episode. We finally learn everything we should have learned three, epi- three or four episodes ago. Um, yeah, that's accurate because I don't know if it's just like the Stockholm syndrome setting in or if it's actually like the right, some of the writing is getting better, but like, I feel like the characters are less obnoxious the last couple episodes. Yeah. I'll agree to that. To the Stockholm syndrome part. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All of it. Yep. All of the above. Uh, it helps that we know the what, the, what the fuck the is. The Jedi. All of it. What the fuck's going on in the show? Like, we know why Rios is a dumbass. We know why Rafi's a... See you next Tuesday. We know why... (laughs) We know why Gerardi was acting like a a crazy person for those few episodes. It's like when they were trying to give us character development and they weren't actually telling us anything about the characters and then they finally actually told stuff about the characters. So all their character development kind of fit. Yeah. So we had... A conversation um, with Harley, who podcast listeners may would recognize from the Moist Boys podcast. And Action Boys. And Action Boys. Um, earlier about the show, because they he and his <laughs> wife haven't watched it, but uh, he had a theory of maybe this show that they're just putting out week to week is actually meant to be binged. Because if you get, if you get this information as staggered as it is, but in that close... In the same day. In the, yeah, same, in the same day. in the same day or couple days. But it doesn't feel as like, it doesn't feel like we're eight weeks in and you're just now telling me why this show is happening. Yeah. And he's right. That kind of is a really good theory because I feel like now that I have this episode and some of this, like, and this story, it's kind of like, oh, if I had had this six weeks ago, I think I would have felt better about some of the episodes we were getting. So it's just like, Maybe if it was in a tighter pattern, if it was something that you binged, yeah, we would prefer it. That being said, episode two is still trash. Yeah, oh, it is. it's awful. Oof. 
Uh, the writing is still bad. I'll the, say. Writing the writing is still, is still bad. bad, but maybe it would have. <laughs> the plot been would have been incomprehensible. Co- yeah, maybe it would have yeah. been more cohesive had it been meant to. Be, maybe if we had ingested it all at once. Yeah. Um. Which, if you write shit that's supposed to be binged, just fucking just drop it all. Just drop it all and make it bingeable because by spreading stuff out that's meant to be binged in week to week format you're you're shooting yourself in the fucking foot you really are and you're making us re- regret regress back into i just want everything that's bingeable because yeah. week to week isn't worth it where there are definitely shows that week to week is worth it and a better way to enjoy that show mm-hmm. so don't taint what we've all finally started crawling out of our goddamn caves and being like no that was good actually let's go back to that a little bit yeah yeah uh i i mean i think uh, at this point like with the scores we've been giving the show we're talking about maybe half a point better per episode if we had been doing it if we if it had been binged maybe. well maybe. i think we we if we binged, to put it in terms of like if we binged it we would be doing an overall score yeah not an that's what i was gonna episode. say and maybe yeah. it would have gotten a better score. Maybe. I'm not saying it'd get like nines and tens and eights, no. but it might have, instead of hearing me be like, it's a fucking three, get out my face. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe the whole thing would have gotten a six. Possibly. Um, the show, this episode starts off really rough. So, a couple of like overarching things. This is the ugliest episode, I think, that there's been so far. Like, Oof. There's several times I was just like, I just wanted the camera to stop moving for one fucking second. Seriously, yeah. like every t- like we shouldn't be getting dizzy when Picard is trying to do this emotional moment, and all I can see is Soji's head like going in and out of frame. Yeah, in front of the thing. So like I didn't see who the the director of this episode was. Uh, My biggest, I didn't really notice how. Bad it was getting mainly because I was looking at something else for a chunk I of mean, it. Yeah, you were. But yeah, uh, it was rough during the Rios drunken scene. Drunken scene, and yeah. I don't know if it was supposed to be a, a directorial choice to be like you're experiencing the drunkenness with Rios, and it's like no, no. I don't, when I'm drunk, I don't want to do that. When I'm drunk, I don't see everything in a panning Dutch angle. So yeah, we'll try again. I'll, I'll, there's there's some like film school reject stuff like the yeah. bottle rolling into the camera so I was like ooh, ooh. ooh. Some, someone Some just graduated film. middle school <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the director of this episode direct, directed two episodes I'm not sure which ones like it's this I have to go through each individual episode look at the episode. Uh, director funny. so I'm not going to do that so we'll say episode it was episode two because that one's kind of ugly too yeah yeah, uh, but there's there's a lot of stuff like when Picard is talking to jo- Doctor Gerardi. There's like, there's w- at one point the camera just like swoops up into the ceiling, and I was like, why did that happen? Just yeah. now? like that didn't need to happen. There's uh everything on the Borg cube was really weird. Like the camera moved weird, and it was like digital tracking shots where it was like stitched together frames. Yeah, yeah. everything uh, about the Borg cube did not need to be in this episode because it all comes to nothing uh and that is literally my <laughs> biggest problem i think with this episode is that it took something that should have been a very powerful moment and a very like hard thought about moment and just had it happen and then immediately be like uh didn't matter yes yes <laughs> that being 7 of 9 having to reassimilate yeah becoming a queen becoming the queen of, of like the cube. thing that she hates the most about herself because it was the only way that she saw that she could stop what was happening that like as the moment was happening in the show it was like oh this is this is going to this is going to amount to nothing because they've already said they're going to jettison all the board and so even as it was happening, I was like, oh, this should be a much more powerful moment than it is. Because as we have said probably frequently at this point, I don't know. I know I've said it at least a couple times. This show hates its legacy characters. Yeah. True. And so it took away what should have been a great moment 
and just had it be, and she plugged back in, and she controlled all the Borg, and then they all died, and then she just unplugged, and it was back to square one. Yeah, like, I don't understand why when they go, when the Borg get jettisoned into space, and she screams no, and we cut to commercial, which is fucking awful. Yeah. When we come back from commercial, we don't immediately go back to her. No. This is a powerful moment, like, and I get, maybe they do hate their legacy characters, but, like, at least fucking show us how rough it is for her or something. She should be crying. She should, when she finally unhooks, because that's what happens. Yeah. Like, that's the other, like, oh, she just desimilated. It was no big deal. Yeah, it was literally just no big deal. To be fair, I also was not paying attention. So I know that she, the, Rom, the Romulan was caught by the Borgs and then... Teleported, teleported she away. She beamed out because okay. that's just the, that's the, the only that's thing the show thing. knows how to do with her too. Yeah. So and then <clears throat> they're gone. We're safe, and then he's just like, are "You gonna, are you gonna simulate me now?" And so she looks at him and just deplugs. Yeah. The end. Like, there's no hard to think about it moment. There's no coming. There is like, yeah. There's not even like a linger of like just a thought of her. It's like restarting a collective right now just yeah. like i have somebody in front of me who could be my first there's just not there's nothing she just unplugs and like it's like well and tuesdays am yeah, i right there's no there's no emotion on her face which seven of nine wasn't always that super of emotional of character but she definitely told you like i hate this i'm fucking pissed like she did show like anger and that this she get she did something she fucking hated hurt a lot it had to have she felt herself dying hundreds of thousands of times yeah like that that hurts and then yet fucking nothing nothing yeah fuck off <laughs> so also, pissed at this show. also where where was the board cube plugging into and what was the was it just plugging into the, like does, does her jacket have Borg implants? Like I wasn't sure what that was going on there. Her <sighs> spine has Borg implants, in but it, it was like through her jacket, but also yeah. a hologram I think through it her was... jacket and uh, didn't leave any holes because that's you know. Yeah, I if I'm being generous, generous, which I'm not, <laughs> I would say <laughs> that it was the. That her spine is obviously still Borg because like so much of her is still Borg. Yeah. They've talked about um, it. They've talked about that. But um On this that it doesn't the the technology of this cube, because this is like a pretty advanced cube, as we've been told and seen. Yeah, it's one of the later It's one of the later cubes. ones. Yeah. So yeah. um if I'm being generous, I would say that the the tentacles that come down don't physically have to plug into her. They just have to go into the node of the hologram that is there when she's standing there sure. because she's just standing in place. Yeah. yeah. So she's standing in a, a, I'm using air quotes here. She's standing in a, like a docking bay for these tentacles and then they queue up her like a diagram of where her plugins would be. And then they just like go to those. Um, Except for she reacts like something is physically hitting physically. her. Physically. I mean, it's it's that it's that matrix mind over matter thing. Yeah, kind it of. also, it's plugging, quote unquote, into her spine, which is full of, you know, a bunch of nervous system. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it could still be. fucking stupid, and I fucking hate that they just didn't give that moment anything. Nothing. It gave nothing. Uh, this episode cements my dislike for Michael Chabon as a screenwriter. This is like I think the third one that I've paid attention to that he's written. It's the best episode that he's written so far. As faint praise as that is, because the other yeah. two he wrote a real hot trash. <laughs> yeah. Um. The we get some reveals question mark at the beginning of this episode. Yeah, uh, it's re so uh, no. um <laughs> pointless reveal for sure. Yeah. Uh, Auntie. Auntie Vajat, Vajaj, Jat Vash, Jat Vash, Aunt Jat Vash, the crazy Aunt Jat Vash. Yeah. So we learn. So we don't. So we learn. <laughs> so we learn that Re Rizzo? Rizzo, Rizzo, except for her name's not actually Rizzo. It's apparently Narissa, which I might. It might have been like 
I've seen every episode. Is her last name Rizzo then, maybe? Is that just what some somebody calls her that, though, right? Lieutenant Rizzo. Lieutenant Rizzo. The Commodore O calls yeah. her that. Yeah, okay. So anyways, Rizzo, it turns out, is related to crazy lady from episode God Who three. Knows. It was too long ago. Uh, yeah, that was episode three. It was episode three. Okay, it's too long ago. Um, who's playing Triominoes. Yeah, who's yeah. playing Triominoes and <laughs> told Soji that she is the destroyer. Yeah. So call back to that episode, I guess. I guess. That was it. That was all that, that was the whole That was the whole thing. Fucking thing. And we, then Rizzo talking out. to her while she's in a coma about how she's a crazy piece of shit and thanks for taking me and my brother in, you dumb piece of shit. Shit. And I would have made a much better Borg than you. Yeah. It's, um, you were yikes. always kind of crazy, you dumb piece of shit. But you definitely went super crazy <laughs> on that one day that everybody went crazy except for me, you dumb piece of shit. I love you. <laughs> See you never. So is the Jat Vosh just those Three people? Those eight broads um, at the beginning, and then... So, what I think it is, and again, I'm being generous and writing my own story into mm-hmm. a storyline that should have fucking told you... <laughs> well, um, they will in two episodes, don't worry. Uh, that's the last episode. Yes, yeah, so God help us. They hopefully will tell us something. <laughs> um, What I am gathering is that the Jatva, ja, Javat, the Jat Vash. Jat Vash is... I finally remembered one of the words. <laughs> is a stupid Dune word that I don't want to remember. Yeah. Dune's not stupid, just these words are. Just the uh, words they use are. Um, Is a collective of female Romulans. And I'm going to... I'm, go, I'm going to continue on with my theory that it is only female Romulans. Is a collective of female Romulans who take a test called... The admonition, admonition, Ad- Ad- admin, admi- admission, admission. Yep, yeah, sure. The Edmonton admonition. The admission to the price of admission. Yeah. Um, uh, they take this this crazy test where you hang on to this lightning bars. Yeah, lightning bar. You know, you like show, those bars that you know. Yeah, that, and you get shown a vision of things that at this point may or may not have happened. So it's not that it may or may not have happened. It is stuff that happened 200,000 years ago yeah. to another race who are no longer around. Right. They were extremely brilliant race who, again, I can't believe we have to tell this whole fucking story. They should have told us this forever ago, but um, <laughs> they created synth life, synth life evolved and killed them all i'm gonna assume either became the borg and or (gasps) attracted the borg it's not entirely clear god they're way too vague about this shit also that would be that would help i would have liked if they had been like okay they brought the borg but they and no every character who goes through this we only catch flashes of it and they've all said i've seen hell blah 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 because it those eight broads seven of them go crazy (laughs) And only yeah. Rizzo walks away unscathed. She takes her aunt with her, which she Why? shouldn't have. Yeah, all the other she women clearly was affected by yeah, it. Yeah, all the other women killed themselves. Yeah, yeah. Auntie uh, did. Very Auntie didn't. Degrees Auntie. of gruesome ways. Did did the Commodore? Did she grab the bars? She too? didn't grab the bars. Okay. She was the one administering the test because she's already gone through it. Yeah, yeah. Um. So counterpoint, and this is this is. This is a not going to be a knock against the episode. Uh, the The visions that they have are the same visions that the main character of Star Trek Discovery had. Ooh. And that really? takes place like 140 some odd years before this show. Mm. So I think they might be just like um, mind fucking themselves into a corner of trying to mash everything together in a yeah. way that doesn't fit. I hope not, but oh no. Um also so the the beginning scene is takes place 14 years ago. Jesus As, Christ. Because why not? Yeah. Um because they like that number for some reason. Really like that 14. Um Commodore <laughs> O Ooh. had been in Starfleet for 16 years at this point and she was just allowed to take a random fucking vacation out to the middle of goddamn nowhere to to administer this test. Apparently. Because yeah. that, that because we find this out later, because my least favorite fucking thing about this episode is that <laughs> Raffi, of all 
fucking people. A can't pronounce her name right correctly in the middle of this episode. Yeah. Anybody else catch that? It's Ra- R- Rafi. 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 It's Rafi, honey. Oh, we're going to get into pronunciations of words <sighs> a little bit later on. because yeah. there's some... So my least favorite part about this is that Rafi of all fucking people figured it out. Not Picard. Not Ju- She needed something to do, so they let her play detective. They let her play fucking detective. Which has been oh absolutely no God. part of her character None. up to now. What's, and like, I get that maybe, because again, if we had binged this, when you recall, Raffi was a very highly decorated member of Starfleet. Yeah. And she had the ear of Jean-Luc Picard. Like, she clearly was on his crew. He relied on her. Maybe this actually was a character, like, design of hers, is that she was this in this detective like she could intuit things she could intuit like... things that she was smart and this is what she did and you know they they do have us like she talks to picard about a lot of things that's happening about the romulans and she is putting pieces p- together really quickly yeah so but really this... what she does is she gets five people together and then just asks them questions and has them figure it out five people together doesn't get any fucking answers really from them goes to the sixth person who drunkenly tells her the whole story. Well, she gets the information. So the we're, we've just all come to the conclusion that Spanish one knows everything and he's the one who just wasn't saying it. Right? I don't think he knows everything because he at one point does look and his eyes do the thing that everybody else is do. And he's like, I don't know. Yeah, but he's choosing to be quiet. He's choosing to be quiet. I don't think he knew everything, but I think he knew more than the other four did. Yeah. And again, we're talking about the fucking hollows. We'll get we'll, we'll, They're going to get their own God. special section. Here in a moment no, can this just be their section? We, uh, we, we want to keep we want to keep dunking on Ra- on Raffi for <laughs> on, a little bit. Raffi for a second. Raffi. So she fucking figures this all out. So she lays out a timeline for us, which thank fucking god, eight episodes in, we finally get a fucking timeline of when all this shit went down. Because yeah. how did <sighs> pissed? <laughs> I'm really pissed, and I keep dropping f bombs, and then this is going to be my next thing: is why. Why were there three? Three in this episode. Please, F-bombs. please, Michael, stop! You're you're hurting us. Three fucking f bombs. We got the fucking God, the admiral, admiral of the star of Starfleet I drops an f bomb. Fucking hate that chick. I do too. <laughs> like I'm sorry. Like I do too. I just can't. With this the, the like bullshit like character that we're supposed to fucking know because well Picard knows her so. Get you your dick hard, one. nerds. Yeah. Like. Um, so she drops one. Rios drops one, which is an unsurprise, which isn't out of character. I don't like that they're dropping f bombs, but at least put it in one whose character it fits with. Rios and Raf and Rafi are the only two that I can foresee dropping an f bomb. So yeah. Rios dropping one didn't really affect me as badly as Girardi. Drop doing it. another one. Doing another one <sighs> while talking to Picard. And it's just like, ew. Yeah. Stop it. Ew. Just stop. Like, Everybody I get. Stop fucking at Picard, please. <laughs> yeah. I get that I, I cuss a lot. I cuss like a goddamn sailor. And that's kind of what Starfleet is. Bunch of like kind of the sailors. space navy. They're the space navy. Yeah, is what I'm gonna go with. Sure. But, well, they're just like the all-encompassing military. But, yeah. Yeah. But like, but they they use the term admiral. You know what I mean? Like but, they have yeah, captains yeah. and admirals. It's they use navy terms. But just stop. Just stop. Yeah, like because the joke in the past Star Trek has, has always been when a character swears, it's a thing. That's like strange because I can't remember what like in the original. Um, the original series films, I know there's a couple of times when like a character will say something or will like repeat a swear that they're not familiar with and it's a joke. And, uh, like the big, the last big joke, uh, in Star Trek Generations is Data dropping an S-bomb. That was pretty funny. You don't remember that? I don't remember. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. We're gonna have to do some of those. Oh yeah, we are. Yeah. Cause I've never seen any of them. Oh, they're so Ooh. good. They're so good. Good in a Star Trek way, not in a good film kind of yeah. way. <laughs> I, so a really good point of this about how Star Trek has handled this is that um, they're about cuss words and words that don't, that get used that shouldn't, is that Ahura, in the very original one, mm-hmm. got called the N-word. <laughs> 
Yep. In the yep. series? In the series. <laughs> got called Pretty the, sure it was in the series, yeah. It got called the N-word. <laughs> and they, and again, this is beautifully acted because she's just amazing and gorgeous and still is to this day. I don't know if you guys have seen her recently. <laughs> still beautiful. Um. Anyways, she, uh, Ahura stops and looks at the person trying to remember, trying to figure out what the hell they just said to her. And then laughs at this person's face because, again, this is this is Starfleet. This is yeah. Star Trek. This is so many hundreds of years in the future. Racism just isn't a thing anymore. And it's played as like, a, oh, how quaint. How using quaint. Using that you stupid to, old language. Yeah. You like, use we, don't, we don't use that anymore. We don't say those things anymore. And you that's fucking where, idiot. Yeah, that's, but it's <laughs> how I feel about cussing. The Mr. unmitigated fucking gall of using that word. <laughs> yeah. Is that like in shut all, the fuck up? God, in oh, all star in all Star Trek, like the god the fucking hubris. Ugh. Anyways, Starfleet they just don't use cuss words anymore. Like, yeah. Yeah. like there is even uh, Data tries to do the there once was a man from Nantup, Nantucket Limerick, mm. and Picard cuts him off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like, it's just not a. It's just not really a thing. It's a, fa- it's a family show, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. This is not a family no, show. No, this no. is... No, we are not family approved. No, we are not. If you're listening to this with your children, what the fuck is wrong with you? Monsters. Yeah, we don't even let our... Our child doesn't hear us record this fucking shit. <laughs> no. <laughs> we know better. That's because he'll repeat it. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself on the side of the angels. Uh, don't let your children listen. Stop. <laughs> So let's get into, so there is... Oh, wait, so I didn't finish my whole Raffi tangent, oh, yeah. by the way. It's just that it really irritates me. So Raffi figures it all out. So the reason that we have now a timeline and the reason that we now know is because Raffi fucking figured it out, Yeah, which kills me. Um, But we do get a timeline. We do get to figure out when everything happened. And big spoilers, I guess, for anybody who's not fucking paying attention and doesn't have two brain cells to rub together. The Romulans were behind the synth tech on Mars. Yeah, turns out the rom the bad guys of the show turned out to be the bad, bad guys, guys the whole of the time. Show. Oh, go, go well, to be you. fair, I'm pretty sure we our uh, or at least my like I'm calling it now was that this whole thing was the Borg, which it still might turn out to be that the Borg or the AI that like blew up uh, two hundred thousand years ago and like became a thing then. Maybe, but um, it being the Romulans. I think the more the show went on, it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, the Romulans are the bad guys. And it's not all Romulans, and that's what's the frustrating part. It Hashtag not all Romulans. <laughs> yeah, hashtag <laughs> not all Romulans. Um, and it's that it's not the fr- it's not frustrating, it's just shitty storytelling again. It is. A bit. It's not all the, not every Romulan who's on the show, actually every Romulan who's on the show is involved, but it's not supposed to be every Romulan in the yeah. universe. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's supposed to be an elite task force elite an elite task force that's not even known by the secret police like the it's super secret police the, if they're the super secret i wouldn't say police I'd super say secret that. lady force yeah Ooh, which again i, I would think, watch a movie called super secret lady force <laughs> i'm pretty sure there probably is one I'm gonna do some googling for you real quick <laughs> um turn off your safe searching because <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure that's where you're gonna find it yeah um my theory still is that this all-female romulan task force Secret police is the antithesis of the female nun nuns warriors that El Elroy, because his name's gonna be Elroy now. Yeah, um, is a part of, which also, ew, that he was part of Seven's de- like character development in this episode. Just, ew, <laughs> he's the yeah. one who snaps her out of being a Borg. Like that's just ew, just, ew. Yeah. Get him off my screen. Ew. Everything he. Everything he does doesn't matter. Everything he does, he's got a <laughs> thicker and thicker Australian accent to it. Yeah. I <laughs> honestly, I need to figure, I need to go back and watch that first episode with like little kid him because little kid him, I'm almost fucking positive had no accent. Yeah. Pretty sure too. But it was thick in this yeah. episode. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was in super. The, and the couple up before this, I was kind of like, yeah, it's there. I can hear it. But this one, it was like, oh, fuck me. Yep. There yeah. it is. Uh, the, also, so like in so many, pe- in so many of the dialogue scenes in this show, they'll just like cut out any moment of silence and just like cram all the words together. Like mm-hmm. when Picard and Soji are talking together and talking about data or whatever, like there's so many times when I could just feel like 
Picard was just going to sit back and have it take a breath and think for a second and then talk. We're just like, nah, let's cut that shit out. Cut let's just out. write, write to the smash this dialogue together. Yeah. Until they get to the the part where the other, I guess it was supposed to be a, a shocking reveal that they reveal that Command Commodore O is Vulcan, and then like there's a silence where you like cut to all the different characters, and you're just supposed to be She's like, she's half <sighs> Romulan, half Bo- Vulcan. Oh named my god. Oh. Like, we didn't fucking know it was her. Like, Come right? On. Like, like, we've known since literally episode two. Well, yeah. we've known since then. Yeah. And they should have all known already because... Well, Girardi for sure knows. Girardi already knew. Picard found out because of Girardi. G- Girardi. G- 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 Girardi. G- Girardi? Nope, Girardi. Girardi? She's gonna, Girardi It's just going to keep getting worse because I hate it. Because <laughs> I hate all of them. Um, And because Raffi told everybody else. Yeah. So shouldn't be it, and it was Commodore O the whole time. <gasps> yeah, we already fucking knew. Move on. Next, <laughs> unless unless it's supposed to be racist and be like she's half Romulan, half Vulcan. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Romulan and Vulcans don't have babies. The, that these ones did. Like they they are currently referring to them as like. Cousin species. Yeah. Like, it's not completely out of the realm of... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So the thing that... The the other thing this show needs to stop doing, I think this is like... They did it once in the last episode, now two times in this episode, is getting Rizzo into a situation she can't get out of, and then she just gets out of it at the last second. Yeah. Like, that, that's getting old pretty quick. Real quick. And it's like, if you can't have the characters, like, come to a conclusion, stop putting them together and then just having it come, like, end. <laughs> yeah. Like, she just teleports out of this. She's like, well, this I'm done in this scene. Teleport me out of here now. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting real. That's getting, that's getting obnoxious. Like, there was no... Having... The... All the ex-Borg, like, just coming down on her... Like a bunch of White Walkers. I don't think they were ex Borg. They were ex Borg. They weren't. They were the the XBs. They weren't just Borg. Yeah, because all the Borg got like jettisoned. Yeah, because they didn't have all the shit but on their face. She yeah. was killing all the XBs. Yeah, and then these were just more of them that she hadn't gotten around so, to yet. And so they... the XBs are still linked into the. So what's the point of? What... Yeah, like why did all the XBs suddenly just like convert back like the... on her? So Maybe. you're sure they're not? I just I don't orcs? think. Well, it's it. You sure they're not just bees? Well, it it goes back to <laughs> it, that it like bees and yeah. buzzing. And yeah. Like, okay. Um, it I goes find. back to that that thing of like what the Picard was talking about, like when he was talking to Seven of Nine, of like you feel like you got your humanity back, and there's just a possibility of that even if you get pulled out of it, you're never fully out of it. Just when they think you think you're out. They pull you back in. Yeah, there you go, Pacino. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they, I can do a better Pacino, but I'm not going to try. Like, it not, would take not, a couple of takes. And not I'm wasted on this show. Basically, yeah. what they're saying is that she could assimilate ex Borg. Yeah. I okay. But if you if she'd have to, uh, I, it's terrible story writing. I'm going to go with sure. That's what the story was trying to tell us. I don't think that that should be what it is, but that's what the that, well. That's okay, what the show if the us. if there was if this show took any care with any of those scenes, they would have made that very clear, and it, then it would have been that much of a harder decision. That but... even if she reassimilate, if she assimilates and reawakens all of the Borg, even those who have been deassimilated are still going to get pulled back into it. And it should have been that much of a harder decision because she knows that she's free and she's going to be undoing that to all of those people. But, but the show was trash. <laughs> it was this show, so we didn't get any of that. Yeah. Be- well, like, it's so strange because episodes two through six, five, six, two through five should have been one episode. Yeah. And this should have been two episodes because so much shit happens. That they don't take any mo- time to flesh out. Everything's just like, oh, so that happened, and now we're moving on to the next scene. Like, yeah. and so like the way that the show chooses to spend its time is really bizarre. Um, I have one caveat for that, though. The Rios shit went on too way too long. Oh yeah, Ooh. the Raffi Rios shit was too long. I think this is a good time to dive into that. So, dive right in. There, it's mostly 
anytime there is any sort of like logistical thing happening in this show, we, I think every episode, we literally have to pause and just like try to figure out what, what's, what's going on here. Yeah. Like what's the last episode when they revealed that Bruce Maddox had disappeared 14 years earlier from everybody's lives, including Dr. Girardi, who is still (laughs) hung up on him 14 years later or when, and there's like every, it seems like every episode or every a couple episodes, there's like a, a, something will be revealed when we have to pause it and like talk it out because nothing makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, this is the, this will I'll, also, this is the first episode where I, where I, I would, I almost blurted out if that, if something, if I was like, if he does one more accident, I'm going to shit my pants right now, which I fortunately <laughs> didn't say because like there were you, two more after that. There were two that were more. Revealed. You did say if there was one more accident, accent you were gonna and that's where you stop yeah i was gonna say shit my pants because i was like i can't take any more of this and then they gave me another one and i was like this is jesus interminable so the producers of picard think that the actor who plays cristobal rios can do accents well and i like i know that this is a thing that other star treks have done like Robert Picardo has done voices for his thing, and oh, I guess a lot of characters did. Kate Mulgrew did an Irish accent for when she went to Old Ireland in oh, that one episode. Yeah. yeah, but that was one episode, and it wasn't her entire character. Yeah, and she can also do the accent. She can <laughs> kind of pull it off. Yeah. Um. Uh, Robert Picardo, I know, has done a couple when he gets like taken over by stuff. Mm. Uh, the the most famous one, I think, the one that started it is Brent Spiner because he is like a voice actor mimicry kind of guy and he yeah. can pull it off sometimes. Uh, I think his, uh, who, uh, who wrote Huckleberry Finn? Fucking, I have no idea. Anyway, didn't he play, uh, when they go back in time? Maybe he didn't actually. Anyway, <laughs> Brent Spiner did a bunch of funny voices for data. Yeah. On that show. And so I uh, like, they think that this this actor is that for this show, but all of his accents are just kind of the same, <laughs> and you can't tell which one's which half the time. Especially when you get all five of him in a room, and two of them are dressed nearly identically. Yeah, and then you cut to the, and then you cut to him. Raffi. Raffi can't even keep him straight. How am I supposed to? I'm not in the room with these people. <laughs> yeah, but then like him alone in his room forgetting that he's Rios and replying to her by saying piss off in an Irish accent. Yeah. Whoops. Whoopsie. Uh, so there's a scene. So there's while Rafi's trying to figure out why Rios uh, gets like a, a memory boner when he sees Soji for the first time. Yeah. Uh, which that goes on for a long time. Like all the things go on for a long time. That was one of the things where we're just like he's just staring at her and we're doing like the the audio slowly fading in. Yeah. The, the whole thing. Uh, so she's trying to figure that out. She figures out that there's someone named Jenna and she figures out that all these different holograms have different. She thinks they have different pieces of the puzzle, which I think is what they're going for. But in the end, it, it didn't they all matter. have the same pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. So like bring them together. Does nothing Doesn't other than know. confuse and piss off everybody else. Yeah. Cause if it was, if this had been in the hands of a competent writer, they all would have had small pieces of the same puzzle or something like you could, you could, you could do, you could pull a Ryan Johnson and subvert expectations in an interesting way. Just have them throw the lightsaber out the window. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but so she learns from the Irish one. Yes. That there was a, someone named Jana back in the past. Yes. And then from the Scottish one, she learns that these holograms are obnoxious and useless. Yep. And then her idea is to bring them all together into one room and talk to them all at once. And say that the Scottish one is the one that told her that the that her name was Jana. Yeah. When it was definitely... The Irish one. Which so is... which Raffi is, when, is racist. Which is when two things happened. One, we had to pause it on a, the wide shot of all five of them and figure out which one was which and who knew what and who told and who would, who had done what. Yeah. We also learned that the CBS All Access app is just utter garbage and you can't rewind for shit. No. Yeah. And so pause it, it on a certain frame. Five fucking times. <laughs> yeah. You have to watch the same three seconds of the goddamn show five times. 
Uh, but eventually we did figure we did figure out who was who and what was happening. Even though Raffi couldn't. Yeah. yeah. Like she didn't know who she who she had talked to about what. Because she even says but like she calls him by name too. She's like, Ian, you're the one who told me about Jana. Yeah. It's like, no. Nope. Nope. False. That's false. Nope. That is false. It was Elliot? El Elon. Elon? Elon Musk told her about it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> no wonder she Speaking of funny accents, hey yo, hey yo. Um, see yeah, that that scene was hot garbage. Uh, yeah. This effects, it didn't look terrible. Blended actually. pretty well, actually. Yeah, like I that that was. I don't know if it was blended well or if that just was not the thing I was thinking of because we were too busy trying to figure out what which was one happening. Was which. This, yeah, yeah. Because the Irish one and the British one were just exactly the same. Yeah, like. Well, the the Irish one had a gray shirt. The British one had a white ish. Had, had, had an off white whitish down gray and his, shirt. Like, blazer and his blazer was long, as opposed yeah. to the Irish one who had a short blazer that was buttoned up slightly more. Oh, my mistake! I'm so sorry that I could not pick that out <laughs> when you have them all sitting down. <laughs> God damn. Um, which is have... weird because so in the beginning of the episode, the Irish one is doing the piloting. Even though in the previous episode we saw that the Spanish one does it's the piloting. The piloting is he the pilot? Yeah, because he's the one that pilots the them. Weapons? Oh, he was weapons, wasn't he? I'm pretty sure he's weapons because he's got like the tactical vest on and stuff like that. Which would yeah, be okay. Then. That's right. yeah. He was because Rios was the, piloting and he was uh, the one shooting. Shooting, and so then we learned that the Irish one is navigation. navigation. And the Scottish one is engineering, engineering. and Which the British, British one, one is, is doctor. doctor, and the Americanish. Americanish. Ooh, that was a bad act. That, that was. I don't know what he was going for there. Who knows? You did. You tried to name it. What did you? Well, name yeah, it? I said he's. He sounded like he was trying to sound like Robert Picardo from Voyager. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a. It's a bad. Southern. Sometimes it's southern. It's, sometimes it's, it's southern. It's sometimes like a, it's like posh American. Yeah. So I was gonna. I was gonna. It's like the nineteen. It's like nineteen fifteen to nineteen twenties American accent. If yeah. you were in New York. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like that. Uh, upper upper crust. Like it's like that. It's an, it's a, the Mid Atlantic accent. It's a well. It's like that. That New England that's almost British, like the John Lithgow's, and it's, like it's not British, was, but no, it's no, sound- no. It's it's Southern. It's a Southern gentleman because they don't because Southern gentlemen like the debutantes' fathers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. They have accents that don't have twangs to them because when we think Southern, most people think twang, like Arkansas. Well, Arkansas, yeah. they think of a draw, which is like Texas. Texas. Um, but Southern gentlemen, the Georgia, like the genteel South yeah, Carolina, South yeah. Carolina, the Georgias, they don't have twangs. They don't have draws. They have Southern, but they're posh Southern accents. Like, uh, Kevin Spacey in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Yeah. Sure. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, a, he goes a little like. If, um, so I'm going to refer you to a, from this terrible show to another terrible show called The Heart of Dixie. Um, they have it. So a lot of the characters have different Southern accents because they're from different parts of the South, parts of the South. And they're all from different equity levels. Yeah. And so, um, one of the characters, her dad is the, is the town doctor and he's a Southern gentleman. He's got that higher, Mm -hmm. more posh sound to it. Yeah, it it falls apart though because he does he does twang it a few times. He does, he twang. does. but again, it's still southern, so yeah. it should have some twang. But yeah, no bueno. That's what no, I'll, no I'll say. He also had no concept of personal space, which for a, he was hospitality. The hospitality. And I do not understand why the hospitality hollow didn't have a of, of all of them didn't have well, the concept. He does of drop space. that terrible. I think it was supposed to be a joke where Rios deleted some protocols. Random stuff. And they, now, the I, now I don't know how to make Viridian tea. And another one oh, says something trash. about how I don't know how to navigate through something, something, something. Yeah. Because Rios deleted that. And it's just like, oh my God, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> Stop dropping <laughs> random ass words. Yeah. I looked up the recipe for Viridian tea and I just don't know how to make it now. Uh, cry about it more. That's my. That's what I say. <laughs> uh, so there's. So I have a question about episode three now, because, um, 
and about a character Ramda is the character. She is the aunt to Rizzo and Narek, who also was not on set for this episode, but at least he didn't appear on screen. Yeah. Which was a blessing that I didn't realize until the bullshit at the end, which I'm kind of pissed at. Like, oh, God. Some more bullshit that they didn't explain. They just were supposed to just accept. Yeah. Um, so Ramda. This brings up, this creates more questions than it answers. Par for the course with this show. So she was on a Romulan ship that was, that they tried, that the Borg tried to assimilate mm-hmm. on this cube. The, it drove the cube crazy, question mark. Is that a, is that a period or is that still a question mark? I think that's still a question mark. I don't mark. think that it drove the cube crazy. It drove all the Romulans crazy. Yeah, the, because the all the attempt to to well, assimilate it, them drove all because all of the XBs that are in that crazy little roomie they're all the Romulan are ones. all the Romulan ones from that from one specific ship. So I'm gonna I'm gonna possibly I'm gonna say theory, and I think this might be what you're trying to get at. The assimilation of Ramda fucked this cube, which might Question make mark. sense. So yeah, so <laughs> it did dr- it did make the Romulans go crazy, period. Because did, everybody shared the knowledge that she had. Yeah. So did it make the entire cube go crazy to to share the information she had? But once they're pulled out question of mark. question mark because once they're pulled out of it then the non-Romulans are fine. Yeah. So did they- it short-circuited the then, knowledge of the Borg Genesis short circuited the Borg question mark. Question That's mark. Yeah. Um, and also where's the fucking queen of she this, dead of this Borg cube? Only one queen Borg all over. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Then why is well, there a queen? Just, they were why, is to... the, why is there a queen cell on each cube then? Cause that's why her teleporter thing is on the inner oh so that she, yeah. can she can pop in from cube, in cube to cube to cube to cube, cube. cube. Uh, counterpoint though there are actually two board queens in the series there's uh, also a third one now her name is seven of nine no fuck me <laughs> but because there's the one in first contact yeah that they blow up yeah and there's also the one in voyager that they blow up uh, same actor question mark i can't remember i know alice Creed was in the movie i don't think she was in voyager but I can't be 100 percent certain. Yeah. But this leads me to my actual the, the 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 actual thing I'm confused about. The fact that they made Ramda and Rizzo related. What was Rizzo not on the cube? Why? How did? Why did so? How did Soji end up? How did Soji and Rizzo and Ramda all end up on the same cube together? Completely not unrelated to each other, and just happen to be that the mission that they're. Did, did, uh, well, cause, but w- if they're, if they're, just, just why, stop, just stop, just why stop, just stop Soji, trying to make it make sense. Just stop like, trying to make it make sense. It just, why, it just did. So Commodore O. Yep. Does Soji work for Starfleet? No. But she doesn't. No. How did she end up on the Borg? Do we know how she ended, why she was on the Borg? She was on the Borg cube. For, she didn't know why, but she had to be there for reasons. Yeah, we don't know how she gets put on the reclama- the reclamation project. We know that only Hugh was Starfleet from the reclamation project. Everybody else was not, which is how come Rizzo can shoot everybody else. Yeah. Except for Hugh. So Soji. Yes, it was the same actress. It was. Okay. She did what? Fun fact, uh, the board queen from Star Trek First Contract Contact was the board queen in Star Trek Voyager. She is also the queen in Christmas Prince. Oh, I like yeah. her. She's doing rough stuff nowadays. <laughs> like, She's also uh, in Gretel and Hansel. She's pretty good in that. Um, so like I said, let's stop doing rough stuff these days. Yeah. <laughs> the... So... So we we don't know why Soji so Soji just happened to end up on the Borg cube where Rizzo and Narek were trying to capture her where no, it no, happens no, no, to be her no. aunt is on the Borg so cube. So Rizzo and Narek 
are on the cube because Soji's on the cube. And it's just a coincidence that their aunt is also on Correct. the cube. Correct. Yeah. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, there's yeah. trillions of stars and quintillions of light years of space, and just so happens that the two people that Rizzo and Narek need to have in the same location just happen to be in Do the same they location. Do need to have their aunt in the same location, or is it just convenient now to say that she's their aunt? Well, let's let's say let's just say they need to because if if I mean if we try to think about this anymore and fucking reason it out. Well, All of our brains are okay, just going to implode. Why do they, they don't need her. It, they're now just adding that to the storyline, but they don't like. I don't think that's going anywhere. I think she just like much like to her. a lot of things with the <laughs> yeah. show. She, they she just talked to her, and now we're never going to see Ramda again. Probably, but why are we are we going to learn why Soji wanted to talk to her? Are we going to learn why Soji was on that cube in the first place to talk to Ramda? Because she had the knowledge of the of all the Romulan bullshit that happened. How and why did she get there? I'm assuming somehow that Maddox reached out to Hugh and said, Hey, I have somebody who needs to be on your project. And Hugh said, Okay, cool. I, we're, we're buddies from back in the day. And let Soji be on the project. Because again, only he was Starfleet. Everybody else was private contractors. So okay, so she was a private contractor. She was a private contractor that was allowed to be there because of Hugh's connection to Bruce Maddox. Yes, possibly. I'm assuming that that's what it is, but they don't and, tell us that. And also, as to why she needed to talk to Ramda, I don't think that we. Again, I think it's going to be because of our theory that these crazy synth lives from 200,000 years ago are now Borg. That's and the only thing that could make sense. And because she went crazy when attaching to the Borg, then clearly something happened and she needs to know what happened upon the ship. So, uh, so Bruce Maddox is trying to destroy the Rom universe. I By creating these things that he was... I think that he's trying. I don't know. Because... Fucking knows. Because either... Fuck. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Because either he... Take off my headphones. <laughs> fuck the microphone. I'm done. Fuck this call. Either he knew about the prophecy and sent her there to learn about it. Right. And he's creating these robots to bring it about. To question fulfill mark. that prophecy. Which is how which is how they're gonna have Allison Peel in season two because it's gonna turn out she was the good guy the whole time by killing the actual bad guy who was Bruce Maddox question mark question mark. are we gonna are we gonna learn are we are we, is this are these questions going to be answered in this season no no are, is is are these questions for this season or are these just things that don't make any sense that one are we gonna go column A column B on that one yeah. I'm I'm going leaning towards column B and I'm riding high off of my calling it from last week when I said that Gerardi was trying to poison the things which apparently so she knew what the thing she was holding was I guess we learned it's like again yep. learning it in the in the backwards order like she knew that the iridium what it was and how it worked yeah yep. so that's why when she said to take it she knew who to put it in her mouth if we had known if she had like ooh is that iridium an iridium tracker Yes, it is. Yes, it is. She puts it in her mouth. We go, she knows what it is. She's not just taking this random thing that someone hands her and putting it in her mouth. Like, mm. write this show in the right order that you need to know this information, people. Or yeah. put it closer together. In the same episode, maybe. Same episode. And I have dialogue. If you're not... Not, you know, six episodes apart. Yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds... Not, uh. not over half your fucking season. So I think at this point we're 50-50. We, this, these might be questions that are going to be answered or this might be something that they did not think about when they were writing the show. I honestly don't know if they know where they're going at this point with it. Like yeah. I think that's why we're not going to get answers by in two, the next two episodes because there's only, thank God, there's only two fucking episodes left. Oh, pray. Hortus, hands be praised. Time is on the side of the angels by ending the show in two weeks. There's only two more fucking episodes of the shit. And I don't think that we're going to get answers in these two episodes because 
I don't fucking think they know the answers to this shit yet. No, they're they, they're making show, it up as they go. The show is making it up as it goes, and this show thinks it's a lot smarter than it is. It does. I'm also worried that this is that they're trying to tie Discovery into this, and that you have to watch the season three of Discovery to know what's happening in seasons one and two of Picard. Oh yeah. no! Because since we're since the the flashbacks that we've seen of the blowing up stuff is the same flashbacks from Discovery. And that there's either that or budget cuts, and they were just they just reused <laughs> like the same shit need, that we yeah, had. We just need footage of destruction and some yeah. shit. And they're like, "Well, we have this." Also, um, discovery does involve synthetic life forms that are evil and are trying to take over the the blow up the universe, and also involve time travel. Oh no! Um, they think that they've gone three thousand years into the future, or yeah, um, which I guess they have question mark. There's some like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of bullshit around that, um, so I'm worried that they're going to be doing that where we're going to be left with a bunch of questions that we have to watch season three of Discovery, which I'll probably do anyway because I'm already two seasons in. Yeah. Um. So I'll probably watch that. But if there are answers in that for this season, I'm going to be real pissed. Yeah. That they're let's just like comb. They're putting their peanut butter in their mint chocolate chip ice cream. That's it's, like some. To go into full on like nerd bitch boy mode, that's like some early two thousands Marvel bullshit. That's like some just, like you have to read. So if you want to know why everything happened in this giant overarching story, you had to read this one issue of this book where the conversation about this whole thing happening happens. But that character isn't the main character of this overarching thing. So buy all of our books if you want to know what's happening. Uh, I think DC also did that with either the New 52 Rebirth or both with Batwoman because issues one of, I think, both. You start off like in the middle of the episode and they like reference things that happened in previous books, I would imagine, because I'm not going to read all of the Batman series to figure out what's going on with Batwoman. But like, yeah, well, like the New 52 had like 10 Batman books. Yeah. And I have no idea how they were all supposed to be connected. <laughs> uh I've We're gonna have to do an episode about about like rebirth, maybe a crossover with somebody we'll we'll yeah. have to But I've I've read some of the Batman New Fifty Two and Rebirth and uh uh I'm sad that they aborted New Fifty Two because Rebirth is garbage <laughs> comparatively. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, as I've as I said on a recent episode, that's in fact way over there. <laughs> uh, listen to the Moist Boys to get that reference. Yeah. Um. So after having like bitched and moaned for the last hour, I will say that this one went down a lot smoother than previous. Uh, like not the the most recent episode. I think which I think we can all agree. Yeah. Um. Of the two episodes that were good. So far, I've, like there are two fine to good episodes. Yeah, one episode that exists, which like this is probably the most Star Trekky episode as far as having a bunch of bullshit happen. That's like sci fi ish. Yeah. Uh, so at least it has that. Like it has the feel of a Star Trek, if not like good the coherence of one. Yeah. Um. So I'll I'll, I'll give it that. Um. Like, as it it wasn't painful as it was happening, with the like, the, the the thing the things that like jump out at you and like smack you in the face and you're like, what is happening right now? Yeah. But like, there's a lot of stuff in between that we haven't talked about. Like the scene with Picard and Girardi as poorly as it was shot. It's actually not bad. Yeah, that wasn't a terrible scene. Like they're perform like Allison Peel's good actor. Um, um, Patrick Stewart's a good actor. They do good acting together. Michelle Hurd's performance gets slightly better as it goes along. Uh, if they if they get out if the if the show gets out of its way and the writers get out of the way of the show, it's actually fine. Yeah, it's that the the writers keep stepping in and be like, um, "Excuse me, I have this thing I want to be doing yeah. that no one else wants to do." There was a moment I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was a moment where she like she says something and then like makes a weird face and then like exits the room. Yeah, I was like, "Is that was that?" The take they decided to go with yeah. right there. I'm glad I wasn't the only one who saw that and was like, what the hot shit was that? Yeah, that was pretty, that was like, <laughs> oof, that's the one you went with, huh? Well, all right. 
Um, but yeah, apart from just like, I would have been just fine if the rest of this show, she just wasn't there. She just decided to go hang out on, <laughs> on, on Freak Canto Cloud. Bite and just like drink her troubles away. Yeah. Um, which feels terrible to root for that, but at the same time, like, fuck this character. It's better than me wishing she'd kill herself. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> uh, it's also better than her just all of a sudden becoming a detective. Yeah. Like, if if this has been her character from the beginning, I would be fine with her. But, like, yeah. she's done so much stupid stuff. Like, she is... I, th- I think Heather mentioned this earlier. Like, we've learned about these characters in reverse order. We got We got their... We got their, like aftermath of the I characters said, i said this off the podcast it's it would have been really nice if we had gotten this character development when we were supposed to because we got co- character development when we didn't know characters yeah it was character development on flat characters and then now we know the characters and instead of getting the character development now we're getting stories we're just getting like new weird traits thrown at her yeah Every few episodes, just like, and Raffi does this now. Raffi, we're introduce her. She is mad at Picard. She's mad that she lives in this super nice double wide out in the desert. She again, it's what Josh just said. Like that, I said it's we got their character development. Yeah, as their introductions instead of just introducing a character and then letting us learn about her. They were like here. Here's her backstory, sort of. Sort of. Here's she character was development. Picard's commander on yeah, a so, ship. So we basically get character development scenes as their introduction. Then we get slight little backstories. Yeah. And now and only now after we've gone through a weird backwards slog through these characters, are they like, well, here's a story about them. And it's like, no, fuck off. Yeah. Okay, if you wanted me to care about your put them through drug yeah. addict, no, you got to put them through a like, story, and then while they're going through that story, you give us, you know, the backstory, and that leads to the character development naturally. Yeah. No, fucking fuck us, I guess. No, you just have the character do a thing, and then they do that thing because I told you that they can do that thing. Yeah. Yeah, and then two episodes later, you find out why they can. You go, oh, oh. okay. Uh, also, it's kind of bullshit that Cristobal just happened to be at the planet that they needed to go to this whole time. Like, in all the in all the gin joints and all the galaxy, you had to roll into mine. Yeah. Uh, just like so, it's so convenient that like he was on a ship with the other clone or with the other robots. So who who's gonna be who's gonna be the, so when is there, we Josh, f- Josh is <laughs> malfunctioning. Sorry, hang on. We gotta, we gotta unplug in for thirty seconds. Yeah. Unplug him back in. We need to reboot our Android. Hang on. Well, because there's like they they drop a huge bit of information that nobody seems to give a shit about on the show, which is that there are man robots too. Okay. Yeah. So when Gerardi, 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 whatever the fuck her name is, <laughs> stupid lady scientist <laughs> stupid lady stupid scientist lady. Good get job. all these stupid women out of my star Good job trek. being in a in a stem major and i really appreciate that there was women in the star <laughs> trek i just don't want to fucking say i'm just saying gerardi's stupid um when she is originally introduced to picard and she's talking to him about um the synth and she and he tells her that it it's dodge and so you know dodge and she goes oh i guess you could make them like that and she's and he says, the them? What do you mean? And she's like, Well, I guess you could make them like that female. Because usually they're they've been making them male and they always come in sets of two. So what's interesting is that we have a set of two, but we had one male and one female. Yeah. And what's bonkers to me right now is that he made multiple sets of Androids that look like Soji, Soji and Dodge. Also someone named Beautiful Flower. Yeah. I thought they were going to be like, his name meant Beautiful Flower. No, his name was just apparently fucking Beautiful Flower. Yeah. Apparently he grew up listening to Hendrix and the Beach Boys and smoking weed. <laughs> 
on this planet that they were they were going to see. Yeah. And that was how many years ago? Strawberry. 14, I assume. No, it wasn't no, it was 14. Nine. It was nine years it was ago. nine years ago. So he's clearly had this... He's clearly... So he disappeared 14 years ago. Yep. But by nine years ago, he had two at least fully functional ones. Mm-hmm. So it took him less than five years to do this? And now he's just been... Amassing an army of yeah. Well, so geez, again, spo- spoilers. We're we don't going wanna, back to Josh gonna... of like, hey, there's well, and it, not spoilers. It's just the fact that clearly he's made more than two. He's yeah. clearly made more than four. He's made at least six. Yeah, and that was nine years ago. So yeah, he's probably he just made left it. the factory on and like <laughs> fucked off the planet. Yeah, like. he clearly made a bunch and. He even said, like, they found me and my, so, my workshop, and it's just like, but who the f- Who found him, though? Because everybody's, every, literally everybody in the universe yes, is looking for him. Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay, so that was going to be my next thing, is Bruce Maddox is on the run when we find him. Who is he on the fucking run from? Because, the screenwriters that needed him yeah, to appear in that episode. Because yeah. nobody knows where the fuck he is. That's actually been the issue for the last nine years, is that the Vot... The the Vaj, Jot Vash. The Jot Vash. The Moadib. The Moadib could No, Moadib is what she becomes, the destroyer. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're the Harat Shiv Harat Harat yeah. They can't they haven't been able to find him in nine years. They literally cannot find where this man has been hiding for nine fucking years. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, hopefully it, they answer about who he's on the run from because it's not the Federation or the Romulans. It's the fucking Borg. We'll just go with that. But the Borg aren't a thing anymore. Nope. Well, I'm going to go with it's the Borg. <laughs> I mean, that maybe makes as so much we'll, sense as anything in this fucking show. Maybe it was show. the Rangers. Maybe Seven of Nine figured out where he was. Maybe maybe it was Starfleet. Maybe it was... No. But then Rizzo would know. Then yeah, they oh, would know. Where, know yeah. And then the Romulans so would already Jesus know. Jesus God. Yeah, so we don't know. We don't know. Is there an unintroduced set of characters that we would not surprise me, me at this neither. point or is this going to be in the why was soji and ramda and rizzo and Narek all in the same board cube situation where they didn't think about it and it just happened yeah well uh, we have two episodes to find out so the other question too is what are these two emissaries doing getting killed by yeah, the federation to set off because the plot of this it was, se- a, se- it was it a distress yeah. signal that they were out to go search yeah, because they happen to so. just be out. They went out to get them because they sent out a single a signal for Starfleet to come get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was just like a really quick, like, "Hey, this is a thing. Calling it in. We're going." Yeah, and yeah. I can't remember if he said it was. Uh... I can't remember if he said it was a uh, one or not. Maybe we'll find out in the next two episodes. Maybe. Um, probably not. Well, it beats going back and rewatching this goddamn episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that being said, Clooney's. Um, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna be generous. It's this. The episode works better in real time, not thinking about it, rather than going back and being like, "Wait a minute, what?" Yeah, yeah. I was say I came out of it at the end, not hating it. Now that I've thought about it again, I'm like. Nope, I lied. <laughs> I came out of the episode really mad about the thing that I talked about being really mad about. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of this. This show, this episode's brought up. It thought it answered a bunch of questions, uh, but brought left a lot more lingering in the air. Like, how come Picard heard that Soji has brothers and sisters, brothers, and it was like, eh, yeah, we're gonna well, don't don't even think about it. Red. Uh, the joke where Picard doesn't know how to fly the ship was kind of funny, I guess. I, it was sure. kind of cutesy, yeah. I guess. To be fair, like, why would he ever sit down into a chair that is the pilot's chair? Because he's never been a pilot. He's been a captain. He's a pilot. He's been a pilot before. Yeah, yeah. yeah that he, uh, he's piloted. The, I can't remember what the episode's called, but it's the one where they get trapped in, like, the gravity, or, like, the energy gravity field, and they have to... That's the one where Jordy br- creates the the hologram of the woman that he falls in love with that he makes Ooh. out at the end of the episode. Also, Picard didn't just start it as a captain. He worked his way up through Starfleet 
Uh, at guess, one yeah. point, he probably was a pilot. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, okay. but he in, literally was talking like right before that about me being on the ship, being on the the, the, the night's watch, watch yeah. of the wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feeling like he was the only one, and that I should pee off and onto the pee off, pee the, edge off of the, the edge of the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, out. Also, I just looked up real quick because I was trying to look up some other uh, terms that they use in Dune, and that the 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 plot of Dune is that a thousand generations ago there was a race of um, thinking human computers that all got murdered off. Honor. Whoops. <laughs> Where does that plot sound familiar from? <laughs> Uh-oh. Whoops. <laughs> Did Michael Chabon write a rejected sequel to Children of Dune and he's just going to slap it onto a Star Trek coat of paint? This is actually just his Dune fanfic. <laughs> yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh, I've always been a big fan of Star Trek. When Star st- Trek and Dune. Here's my Star Trek Dune fanfic. Yeah. It's all in one now. Oh my God. They get to the <laughs> planet where the androids are being oh. made and the fucking sandworms are there. Ah! Oh yeah. my God. It's actually Arrakis. Oh my God. And uh, Sting comes out in a big metal bikini. Nope. Fuck yes. Mm-hmm. No. Fuck off. Nope. Not the Sting version. <laughs> not the Sting version. Nope. It's either sci fi miniseries or nothing, bitches. Yeah, William fair. Hurt for days. Well, he dead, so it would be... Uh, I mean, I didn't mean, like, actual William Hurt. Well, no, I know, but I mean, like, that oh character. I mean, played Paul. William Hurt is still alive, by the way. John yeah, Hurt died. Yeah. John Hurt died. No, but I mean, his character is dead. Yeah. Oh. Because he uh, was Paul. Yeah, he was... No. William, Sorry, he was Leto. He was Leto. He was Leto. Paul Atreides is, is the... It's going to be James McVie. It's going to just walk go. out because he's Leto Atreides, and it's going to be like, oh, what did McVie say? Roped you into this shitty ass show, you yeah. poor man. He's like, and I control the worms. <laughs> and the worms are now androids, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Why There's... aren't we writing this fanfic? Shit. If there are sandworms, and if if they're, if it's literally just going to be Dune. I'm gonna be... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, because Dune had, Dune had a couple sons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's fucking Arrakis. Oh, my God. If we get there and it's just nothing but desert, I'm going to be like, it's fucking Arrakis. It looked green-ish. A little bit, yeah. Nope, uh, nope. In my brain, you can't. I can't, can't stop me. Until next week this. when we watch this, you can't stop me. It's a Gracchus. It is. Uh, so I'm going to give this 6.5 Clooney's. 90% <laughs> of that just for the performances in the episode. I think everyone does a good job. Uh, Isa Brionis, which we don't think we've really talked about at all, She because she does fine. I like the scene between her and Picard and her and Girardi. I think that was... Yeah. I think it was a good scene for both of those characters yeah. to be like... Because Drati gets to see like what her work has like brought come yeah. about to like all this all, what she she's been. I don't this know. This is her life. Or this is her literally her life's work. Well, the two year the the however however many months she worked on it back in the day. Yeah. Well, whatever she's, she's been, been doing since she's then. Been, yeah, yeah, attempting to do since the ba- the ban and the ban was. 14, 14 years, years ago. ago. Fuck my life. So when she was a, when she was still a toddler, they, yeah. they put the ban up in her life's but work question mark. But she's not been able to develop synth life, but she's still been researching it. They can do the they can do the theory. They're just not allowed yeah. to do the practical. So yeah. this is still her life's work, and this is still a a dream. And to see one of them in person, and I really liked the line of "Am I a person? Yeah, am I a person to you right now? Not in theory." Standing here looking at you, yeah. because as much was, of a person as it was, you are. It was starting to go into like cringe territory when she was like, "Oh, it's, the design is so beautiful, it's so perfect." Yeah. And I'm like, uh, "Lady, read the room here. <laughs> read the fucking room." And then so she asked her, and it's just like, "Oh, that was it was it was very well done." Yeah, yeah. There, God damn it, this is what pisses me off about this fucking series. This is what pisses me off, and I was saying it to Harley today: is that there is so much goddamn potential. There is. They've got in the underlying of this, they've got a good show and they sometimes are like, here you go. Here's, here's this, a little morsel. Here's of it. a morsel of potential. Here's a morsel of and good. Then you come in and you grab that morsel and you start chewing on a little bit and they just slap you in the face. Yeah. It's like they're somebody tried to hand them potential and they dropped it and it rolled away on the floor and then they picked up a little sauce from that potential meatball <laughs> and went, here you go. Lick it off Eat my it. fingers. <laughs> like Eat it, Joe Biden. Yeah. Um. Like, <laughs> there's enough there's enough here to like this should have this should be good. And that's what pisses me off the most is that the potential is there. 
some of the execution is okay, and it's just like you just most of us is being terribly mishandled. It's just being terribly mishandled. They're drop. They're literally dropping the fucking ball on what could have been decent. Yeah, but I'm still gonna give it a six and a half. I think it's probably the third best episode so far. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna give it that, and yeah, that's, that's those are my very long final thoughts. <laughs> um, I. I'm still going to go four on this one. Oof. Ooh. Mainly. Was it Rios? Is Rios killing you? No, not the Rios. The Rios thing is just funny to make fun of. And like, at least this show has that. At least this show has things that we can just make fun of. Yeah. At least it has that. The, the reason it's getting a four and feel free to just tell me to shut up about it already. But the fucking seven of nine thing just really like irked me. I'm not going to tell you to shut up because it's, Unfor- again it's them dropping the ball yeah hard, hard. well i mean i mean like that no, they didn't like even a- drop that ball they spiked it into the fucking ground oh yeah they did no i meant that more of like uh the general audience who are just like don't don't care about me bitching about this can tell oh, me to shut okay, up good. but like general audience you can tell them to shut up yeah <laughs> hit me up in the, it in the comments and, and just Tell me to stop being a little bitch boy about about my Jerry Ryan crush. Don't be such an SJW man. Yeah, but like it just that whole everything on the cube was pointless and stupid. And that's been the whole cube. (laughs) That's been the cube. That That has been the cube. That is, you know what? The cube is a character. They are, (laughs) it's, you know, it's the city. Instead of the city, it's it's the cube. You know, when I watch Sex in the City, I always think of New York as the fifth character. You know, when I watch Star Trek Picard, I always think of the cube as a character. Yeah, the character is fucking pointless. Yeah. Like, as, the as cube is consistent. Is They're consistent with how pointless the fucking cube is. <laughs> mm. As soon as Picard left the cube, that should have been the end of the cube. Yeah. yeah. Everyone should have gone off the cube and left the cube, and yep. the cube was done. And I don't understand why Hugh couldn't. Like, just go off on the so. cube and retire. As it, at doing this XB work, yeah. Because now literally yeah. all the Borg, like every like that, all the Borg are dead now. All of the work is lost. Most of the XBs are dead. So everything, literally everything about the queue was pointless. Yeah. So other than being in, an incredibly convenient plot device, where they can just bring together uh, three different storylines for some reason. Um, yeah. The, yeah. This yeah. episode gets a four. Heather, what do you got? What do you got on your Clooney's? Um, well, when I first finished watching it, I was probably inclined to give it a six. But the more that we talk about <laughs> it, the lower my score is getting, <laughs> as per usual with this fucking episode, with this fucking series. Um, it gets a five for me. Again, there were some well acted, it's de- well acted parts, and again, I can feel the potential, which I think irks me a lot more than it does help. But it, they just the yeah the seven of nine thing hurts. The fact that the Rios part was the Rios Raffi investigation was way too fucking long, but there were genuine moments that I liked and I like that we're progressing again. You said it. I don't think you said it on the podcast, but if this had been the the fourth, fourth, episode. fourth, fourth or fifth episode. Yes, please. This would have been something. This would have been some eight episode run. Yeah, yeah. it would have been yeah. fine. Yeah. It's just, again, they're spending way too long on a series I don't give two shits about anymore. You've ruined my goodwill. You're not going to get a better than a six. This barely gets a five right now. Like, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, there was two, three, four, five. A four episode run where nothing happened and they were just spinning their wheels, giving us bad characters. Yeah, it was real rough. So, yeah, almost half of this season was completely extraneous, extraneous. And if it hadn't existed, we would all be, I think, much. I think we'd be giving these sixes and sevens instead of fours through fives through six up to up. I don't think six would have been our high. <laughs> yeah, our high point of this. Um, so for those of you that don't want to be spoiled with previews for next time, uh, if you were quick enough on that button of turning off the app before the scenes from the next episode just shoot, shoot at you from seriously. the screen, uh, which is another thing like we noticed in the like the commercial breaks would happen like a second and a half before the episode wanted them to. So when you came back from the the commercial break, you would get the actual end of the scene. Yeah. You would have a character's line of dialogue, like all my, like it seemed like most of the commercial breaks were seven of nines dialogue. (laughs) And it was like almost cut out, like barely, 
made Barely it out before let her it went to commercial. Yeah. And it then it would come weird. back and then it would do the fade out to commercial break and you're like, what the fuck? What the CBS fuck? All Access. Like they have 100% control and they still can't manage manage it. Yeah. Like it, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare if app. If people, if like random commenters on YouTube can put in time codes on a video and have it be like spot on accurate, fucking do your job. Yeah. Like, <laughs> not not hard maybe give uh not affiliated but red letter media a call i'm sure they could figure out how to give you some commercial like their commercial breaks are pretty spot on yeah uh, if they do put mid rolls in there sometimes they do sometimes they don't but when they do they happen in the fade outs not at the not in the line of dialogue now i'm doing charles brunson doing for some charles reason. brunson um but yeah, check out the Moist Boys podcast. We're doing Anna March right now. Uh, I mean, what else are you gonna do? You're stuck at home. You got the, you got the itis is everywhere. Uh, we got the coronavirus. I keep wanting to say swine flu, but that was like ten years that ago. That was at this like point. ten years ago. God, damn. we got we got the corona. Everybody's got the coronas. Yep. Um, <laughs> everybody's got that six pack of ronies <laughs> hanging out in the fridge. Uh, you can't talk to anybody, you can't hang out with anybody, but you've got us, you've got, uh, you've got your podcasting buddies. Yeah. Uh, if you have real life buddies that you want to share this series with, uh, give, uh, give us a shout out. Hey, you know what? When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, Moist Boys will be there for you. I was going to say <laughs> coronavirus is here for you. Coronavirus <laughs> will be there for you. Uh, so don't give anyone a big hug this week. Um, don't tell any, well, you can tell them you love them through some sort of device of some kind. Yeah. Um, and also share our podcast because whatever. Um, <laughs> cause whatever. If you head on over Compelling to our, argument. <laughs> it, whatever the moist boys podcast, whatever, whatever. <laughs> uh, if you head on over to our, uh, Instagram, I'm also going to be putting this on Twitter at some point soon. Um, we're going to be running a contest for every 10 new followers we get on Instagram. Um, ones that are real, like I don't want a bunch of like obviously fake accounts yeah. on our clogging up our, our business. But if for every 10 new accounts who we get on Instagram and or um, Twitter, that's separately. Uh, I'll shoot out. Uh, you can see some uh, wonderful pictures of stickers that we got in from um, I guess I can shout them out since they gave us a hundred free stickers, sticker mule. Yeah. Uh, they do good work. They do some really good contests. Uh, we actually got, we actually won one of those contests. So you got a big roll of stickers from them. Um, and so our gain is your gain. Um, is Rogaine. Is Joe Rogaine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so every, every 10 new, new, uh, people that follow us on our, uh, social media accounts, we're going to shoot off some stickers to one of our random followers. Uh, I'll say if we do it like a raffle situation, if tag us in posts and uh, maybe you'll get, maybe you'll get an extra, extra chance at winning that. There you go. We'll um, figure out some way to make it work. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to make work. Uh, also keep an eye out. Uh, we're, uh, the month is already half over, but at some point this month, we're going to start doing more Patreon content. We've got the first thing named <laughs> yeah um uh, that's the first step yeah that's the first step uh but uh my i want to do we want to do some miyazaki monthly monthly miyazaki that's the new name of the show there you go. your monthly miyazaki uh he's got like i think i said like 12 full-length films that you that can easily right. find out there uh we want to do those on the patreon which we, i want to start this month well, I want to do them chronological, so the Castle of Cagliostro is where I want to start with that. So that will be a thing to keep an eye out for. I uh, also want to run maybe some contests over on Patreon. Maybe if we hit a certain number of patrons, I'll send you one of the very beautiful sweatshirts that I'll put up a picture of so you guys can get one of those. They look pretty nifty, if I do say so myself. Um, but yeah, otherwise... Uh, we'll see you next week. If you don't want to know what the next time on for Star Trek Picard uh, reveals. And click. So they're just going to a planet of sojis and beautiful flowers then, right? Like that's what they're implying? Yep, sounds about right. Who Be the fuck knows? Because uh, Gerardi's like, do they hate 
do all of them hate us? And Soji says, I can't remember. She says I don't something fucking about. fucking know. I don't know them. They don't know me. <laughs> it's because I know knowledge doesn't mean I know people's feelings. Yeah. Uh, we get that. We get a lot of. Half of the half of the, the previews are like pitch blackness with like red flashing lights because yeah. they lose power. And then they're going to go crash land on the planet. <laughs> yeah. And the ship's going to get eaten by a big old worm. There's some weird vagina ships that come at them. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. Like. Or should lightning. I say some weird labia ships? I don't want to be. Yeah, there you go. Um, anatomically accurate here. I don't want to be spreading <laughs> nonsense. on. I don't want to be spreading misinformation online. They're like the lightning speed uh, editing does not always do you a favor. And I feel like this is one of those things where if you just showed us a ship instead of five space vaginas. Yeah. Maybe I would have some semblance of an idea of what the fuck is going on in the next episode. Yeah. But no, you just, <laughs> just give me that flash of that. And then we go, Oh, what was, what was that shit? And then the ship is going to crash land on the planet and everybody's going to be fine. Yay. Um, but we do know that there are, I guess it sounds like there are a lot of robots, androids on this planet. Yeah. They may or may not be angry. Will, the boy Soji's be someone that we recognize. Will it be turn out? Will it turn out to because we don't see because they're playing coy with it because uh, Rios has a picture that he says brother flower drew of him and uh, Jana Jana, but we don't see he doesn't he doesn't say anything about Brother Flower other than the name. Yeah. Which is weird because like you would think you would do say something about this character. So does that mean it's the thing if we've already seen this person and I had like a, an idea like an idea just popped in my head that made me really uncomfortable which doesn't mean the show won't do it. Is that it's gonna be like a Narek? Oh no. <laughs> oh god, I didn't even think of that. Cuz it's going to be someone we know. And like it doesn't make it doesn't make complete sense because unless Rizzo is also one because they were brother and sister. Yeah. But like I guess these androids can like be people and grow question mark. I don't know if that's actually true or not. We don't know enough about the show to rule out or in anything in particular. Yeah. But the fact that they are been very vague about Brother Flower leads me to believe that it's going to be something that's going to be a reveal. Yeah. And I can't think of what else it could be. Like the only two characters that would make sense. Well, it doesn't make sense, Narek, because he's an old man compared to Soji. Yeah. But this show doesn't know that. The only other character that... And that it would also wouldn't make sense, but the only other character that's like in the same range would be Elrond, but that doesn't make sense. Mm, yeah. So it's either Elrond, Narek, or a completely new character that they're just being mysterious about for no reason. Or my theory is that it's going to be the same actress playing, and it's going to be some attempt at like a trans character. Uh, counterpoint, Brent Spiner not in makeup. Mm. They do say, she did say brother, yeah. but that could be in a philosophical sense and not in a, how we think about it. That's His fair. name is Brother Flower. Beautiful Flower. Beautiful Flower. I called him Brother Flower. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah. His name is Magic Rainbow. Um, spelling B. His name is River Phoenix. Um, is it going to be? I guess we'll find out next. Up. Maybe we'll probably not find out till episode ten. We will find out in the last thirty seconds of episode nine. <laughs> <laughs> At least this episode didn't do that. It didn't wait till the last thirty seconds to have things happen. Yeah. So kudos to that. Um, also, I didn't. We didn't. I kind of alluded to this. 
but I, I think I gave this episode a full extra point just for not having any Narek in it at all. <laughs> um, it did, yeah, it was, well, you did kind of allude to that, yeah. It was bullshit that they, he, he, did fi- he found him he again. He found them So somehow? I guess my theory was also incorrect that she deactivated the stuff by shooting herself with the thing, or yeah. this show was just lazy and they're like, well, he needs to know where they are, so he's found them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean towards that because this show... <laughs> Does it's not lazy. shy away from just being trash. Yeah. Lots to think about. <laughs> or preferably. Or, or try to not think about. In my if, case, lots to forget yeah. by the time we watch this next episode. Um, because, like, I had forgotten that Seven of Nine gave Elrond the little, little key the tag thing ring. that he. Heather says that she didn't give it to Elrond, she gave it to Picard I'm, at that point. Elrond is not a real character. He's just kind of a vestigial arm of Picard. Yeah. In the show because he's not a real character because he's an Australian accent that sometimes appears and sometimes doesn't. Yeah. I just... It's fucking <laughs> uh, hopefully Michael Chabon hasn't written, added any um, typewriter involvement with the next two episodes yeah. if we're lucky. Hopefully this director does not come back for another episode. Hopefully. Because I want one that looks... If it's not going to be good, I want it to look good, which some of the episodes have yeah, going for them. Fair. This one has some of the most ugly everything I've ever see, I've seen on this show so far. Um, but with that being said, we're finally done. We're almost done with the, ser- with the season. So close. Maybe done with the series. Um, I did come up with a new theory today. Um, after seeing the picture of LeVar Burton, Michael Dorn, and Jonathan Frakes, um, my theory last week that uh, Riker will come in on a ship at the last minute to save the day. Um, maybe all three of them, Jordy LaForge, Worf, and Riker captaining their own ships fly in to save the day at the end. Uh, it would be it would be nice to see. It would be better if Gates McFadden was also there because she is the captain in the alternate timeline that we see in All Good Things. Oh, that's right. She is, huh? Yeah, she's the captain of a medical ship. Yeah. Forget thing. Uh, which, uh, Admiral Clancy does say that they have, a, like, a, I can't remember what she calls them, like a battalion of ships or whatever mm. at Deep Space 12. Yeah. So with some timey-wimey bullshit, they could make it so that they maximum warp to this planet. Yeah. Um, the show n- name drops something. Are you just kicking me for funsies? <laughs> okay. Uh, this episode <laughs> name drops something from one of the movies, the, the warp drive. Johnny Cochran? The, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, they name dropped that and I was like, oh, hey, yeah. Call Is that from Cochran? The, the Yeah. Played by... Played by uh, James Cromwell. Who was in another episode of TNG, not as they're from Cochran. Oops. But TV did that a lot Yeah, back in the day. Yeah. I mean, Peter Capaldi was in an episode of Doctor Who before he was the Doctor as a random dude, so whatever. Which, I mean, you know, maybe the Doctor saw him like, hey, that's a nice tall glass of water I want (laughs) to look like someday. Yeah. Does the doctor control what they look like, or is it just random? It's random. Mm. There's a show that we're never going to do on anything ever. Oh, God. That's, there's way too much. Way <laughs> too much. Uh, and I'm pretty sure at this point, I would be on the opposite of everybody by saying, you know, I kind of like the Jodie Whittaker season, because it actually isn't as bad as the other seasons, but that's just my personal... I'm not a big Doctor Who fan, so for folks out there, don't worry. I'm not going to make fun of your Doctor Who. <laughs> You got that to look forward to. You got that to, well, it's not, to look, not look forward, forward to, to I guess. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to, if you want us to do Doctor Who, head on over to our Patreon page. If we make enough money doing podcasts and we get enough pushback on it, you know what? I don't think there are, there's very few pieces of media that we wouldn't do with the right fiduciary inducements. Yeah. If you get us, if you give us enough money for it, we'll do the Eccleston season. Yikes. only that season the season where they mix the the dialogue and the music at the same levels yeah <laughs> all right thank you everybody for listening on this super long episode of star trek picard uh two episodes left 
Uh, shoot us a message across one of our many platforms if there are any series you know of coming up that you want us to do. Uh, we I don't think we've had any, anything picked out yet uh, 100%. Yeah, not concrete. Uh, we got The Mandalorian coming at some point. Um, thankfully, it oh, did yeah, finish filming. In October, I want to say. It's when that drops. Yeah. Fortunately, it finished filming before uh, COVID dropped uh, because a lot of things are being delayed now. Like uh, Inhumans, the director just decided to disappear into seclusion. Wait, what? Or was it? It was either Inhumans or the other one they're doing. The Eternals? Yeah. Yeah, Eternals, that's what I mean. Oh no! He's decided he's he's self. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, self. He's quarantining himself. Yeah, self quarantining. Yeah. Uh, so, fortunately, that didn't happen with Mandalorian. Question mark. We'll see what happens when we watch season two. Whether or not okay. that was a good thing or not. Um, but between uh, middle of April to end of October, we don't really have anything planned right now. But if you know any good weekly week to week shows. Let us know, or if there are any shows that you want us to talk about week to week that we could also do. Maybe I'll talk everyone uh, into uh, ragging on Lock and Key <laughs> for a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll see what happens. Rad. Um, thank you for listening, and we'll be back next time. <laughs>